This is Seven National News and in your top story, UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, has ordered that the Dubai Bypass Road be renamed to Emirates Road. The Emirates Road is a key traffic corridor in the structural roads network in the UAE and offers an alternative motorway to Sheikh Zayed Road and Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Road, as it provides an external corridor for motorists travelling from Ras Al Khaimah, Um Al Kuwain, Ajman and Sharjah to Abu Dhabi Emirate and vice versa. Without having to go through downtown area, this reducing traffic congestion on internal roads. The road will gain growing importance given the massive urban expansion developments stretching 120 kilometers on both sides. The RTA's future plan foresees routes between the Emirates Road with Sheikh Zayed and Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Roads. In an announcement by the White House on an official USA embassy site, it was revealed that His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, will head to Washington on the 16th of April to visit the American president. The White House said in a statement that the president looked forward to discussing with the Crown Prince the strong and enduring ties between the United States and the UAE and consulting on common strategic interests in the Gulf region and the broader Middle East region. They said relations between the two countries were strong, particularly in defense cooperation and economic ties. The two countries shared commitment to advancing peace, economic opportunity and stability to throughout the world. In 2009, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed met with Mr. Obama in Washington during a four-day private visit where the two pledged to continue their close cooperation on security, economic and energy. His Highness Sheikh Rashid bin Hamdan Al Maktoum, Chairman of the Board of Trustees at Al Maktoum Foundation, in partnership with the Sheikh Maitha Center for Special Needs and Al Maktoum Foundation, opened a heritage village on Thursday to support young adults with special needs. The partners of the agreement confirmed that the village will be open to all members of the society and will enable visitors to enjoy a wide range of services, programs and initiatives. Sheikh Rashid toured the village and admired the idea of highlighting the role of persons with special needs and building the capacities as productive partners in the society. Officials present at the launch commended the efforts of both the government and private entities for their participation and added that this project will build strong communication between families of children with special needs and specialized education and training providers. The village will run from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. every day until Saturday the 13th of April at Latifa Hospital. We are very glad that we opened such an heritage for special need to introduce their work and their activity that they are a part of the society. And uh, this is to initiate and to uh, encourage them to participate in such events and to make them stand on their feet in future that they won't be reliable to others except themselves and to to make uh, things and manufacture things by themselves, their product, they can introduce it to the market. And uh, the target of this uh, heritage village is even to, why did we make it as heritage? Because to make them very close to their heritage. To, uh, to make them understand that they come from a very rich culture and very rich uh, heritage. Motorists from GCC countries who leave without settling their traffic fines will find the penalties waiting for them when they return home, a senior police official has warned. In a report in a local daily, Major General Mohammed Saif al Zafain was quoted as saying that the fines will be digitally sent to the traffic authorities of the violator's home country, where they will have to pay their dues, adding that some visiting drivers believe they can get away without paying for traffic offences like speeding, as their car number plates are not registered in the UAE. Al Zafain said many motorists in the UAE and other GCC countries are not aware that they cannot escape penalties if they commit traffic offences in any GCC country. He added that there is currently an agreement between GCC countries that if any motorist commits an offence in any member country, the fine record will be transferred immediately to the country of the offender. 
Dubai is expected to host 15 million international tourists annually by 2015. And Dubai Airport is, is, is forecast to carry 65.4 million passengers by the end of 2013. The Emirate is considered to be a popular destination for travelers from all over the world, according to senior travel agents at this year's American Society of Travel Agents International Destination Expo. With a beautiful backdrop of the Burj Al Arab Hotel, the event was hosted on Thursday evening and welcomed up to 700 North American-based travel agents who were enthusiastic about exploring the Emirate and everything it has to offer. Carried out as part of Dubai Department of Tourism and Commerce Marketing's initiative to promote the Emirate to a wider market, officials stated that every guest will return to their country with a greater appreciation and understanding of Dubai. CEO of the Society, Zane Kirby, stated that by giving agents a hands-on and on-the-ground experience, will equip them to fulfill their customers' expectations on traveling to the Arab country. The event in Dubai is really important because it's the first time that many of our agents from the United States, and we have over 500 of them here, uh, can learn about the destination firsthand. It's really important that, that uh, agents have firsthand knowledge of a destination because then they're able to better go home and sell the destination to uh, U.S. travelers. The fact that everybody's going to come together here, so I believe that um, uh, there's a lot of work ahead of people to do. Um, uh, I, I believe that the meetings that's going to take place within this event uh, will become very fruitful and uh, ultimately will manage to sell the different destinations. Uh, I personally do come from Jordan, you know, and the reason why I'm here because it's interesting to be in a different location. Being in Dubai is a great asset also, which I'm sure eventually we can exchange the information on a Dubai level, on a Jordan level also, and finally in North America. The Open Thinking Knowledge Festival shined light on new business approaches today at Dubai Knowledge Village, starting off with a business yoga session at 8 a.m. this morning. The main concept of open thinking is supported by three pillars, business, innovation and leadership, as stated by managing director of the event, Iyad Mortada. He added that every employee strives to better their performance in the workplace, whether it is professionally or personally. The trick is to find out how. The networking challenge gave guests an opportunity to connect with as many professionals as possible by playing an interactive game, followed by a panel discussion by some of the industry's most sought-after graduates. Also a highlight activity for the day was the sharing of eight inspiring business stories in the UAE, which presented the ups and downs of running a business. Each presenter is presenting between five to ten minutes and it's just a collaborative effort about so many business ideas, about the new and modern approach of doing business. The main concept of Open Thinking is having two events in one day. One event in the morning, one event in the evening, completely targeting different audience. So in the morning it's more about innovation, it's more about you know, understanding how can you come up with the new business approaches and about delivering everything in an interactive approach. But actually what was happening in the evening, we move more to academic and understanding you know, how things can happen about the future of accounting, the future of auditing, of uh, uh, the future of HR, work, learning. So all these topics are delivered from different perspectives by experts in this industry as well as academic professionals. The first edition of the Jitec Shopper Spring Show concludes this weekend and had thousands of bargain hunters on the lookout for the best deals on offer. The prices of some of the latest smartphones, laptops, TVs and cameras were cut up to 75% off. The four-day event was open to the public on Wednesday the 3rd of April and had more than 3,500 shoppers making their way into the venue within the first hour, according to organizers. The spring edition had the country's leading electronic distributors put out more than 30,000 different products as well as bundled deals and launches of the latest tech goods. According to retailers, the show exceeded their expectations and generated sales similar to the main event, Jitec Shopper, which is held every year in October. Exhibitors stated that additional stocks had to be moved to the location to, create, to cater for the greater demand. Meanwhile, spoiled for choice, consumers were enticed by freebies, however, took their time around the various stalls and tested out notebooks, tablets, smartphones and even funky accessories for their gadgets. And finally, looking to other news now, the Middle East Film and Comic-Con Dubai brought out the superhero in everyone with a celebration of animation, sci-fi and comic book heroes. The success of the second edition of the event in the Emirate echoes the rise of pop popular culture internationally. 
Taking place over the weekend, visitors witnessed some of their favorite cartoon characters in action, including the executioner from Resident Evil striking a bloodstained axe in front of all the characters from Cartoon Network's Adventure Time. In addition to the monsters, villains and heroes, supporters also were given an opportunity to rub shoulders with celebrities, comic book artists, illustrators, film directors and aspiring actors as costume players willingly posed for pictures and famous writers signed autographs. Honestly, I think there's always been interest in this region. Um, there's never been an outlet for all these amazing fans to come together. And I think Middle East Film and Comic Con has really given them that. And, you know, everyone's like, now finally, you know, there's something there for us. And that's why you see the, you know, the crowds that we've been seeing since last year. And it's just grown this year. You know, it's unbelievable. We're, we're very fortunate and we're very happy. I think one of the most interesting things about being part of the Comic Con circuit is really that you uh, you get to, to see and appreciate you know the different countries around the world that do absorb the material that you're making, and you know I, I like to think of my participation in art uh, as as part of a bridge you know bridging with the world. You know when you work with someone like Peter Jackson, you realise that you, the material that you're doing is going to go out and be enjoyed by almost every person on the planet. And uh, that's, it's, it's just such an honor to, to sort of get into that position and, and then be able to go out and springboard around the world and sort of see the result. Concluding today, pop phenomenon crossed boundaries with this year's Dress Up Comic Con, celebrity A-listers, game and film launches, plus exhibitions of collectibles. Cartoon Network Studios Arabia, we're, we're developing new original shows that come from this region, for this region first and foremost, but that will also be international Cartoon Network shows. You can see from the, the, just how busy Comic-Con is that it's really booming here. And I could, you know, just the atmosphere at this place, you can see the amount of people that are coming here, you know, in cosplay, dressing up as characters. There's obviously a real appetite for character uh, comic books and, um, and for animation generally. I think that it's obviously a good time for this industry here.